you know, introducing yourself, just telling us, you know, your name, where you're from, those sorts of things. Yeah, got it. Hi, I'm Jack Goldberg. I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I am 17 years old and I go to Cherry Hill East. Um, and I've had celiac for about five years now. Thanks, Jack. So would you mind just telling me a little bit about, you know, your journey to diagnosis? Yeah, so at a young age, like a very young age, about seven or eight, I was frequently vomiting every night and it was horrible. And it was just like, we, we really had to do something about it. So we went to a sure. gastro doctor and then the gastro doctor basically told me that they think that I may have celiac after an endoscopy, but they weren't totally sure. So um, they did further tests and my blood tests kept coming up negative, but they wanted to put me on a gluten-free diet. So at about eight years old, they put me on a gluten-free diet and I was kind of told that everything was going to change. And as a little kid, I just kind of broke down crying instantly. I remember I was, I was like, so I'm not going to be able to eat pizza. I'm not going to be able to eat cookies. And I just wanted to be normal was more the thing. Like I, I didn't want to be different than everybody else. So th that really got to me. So then I started this gluten-free diet and I was little for a little bit, but then they basically said, because my blood test, every single time I got my blood test kept coming up negative. They were like, it's kind of unfair for us to have you on this gluten-free diet if you're not fully gluten-free. So instead, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let you, um, for a little bit, you can have one meal of gluten a day. So like on my birthday, I got to eat a piece of cake. Uh, every day I got to have a meal of dinner that might be like some bread or pizza or something, which was nice. And I actually like, that was a fine time. But then eventually they kind of said, you do not have celiac at this point. We can't say that. We feel bad. You are going to get off this diet and you're going to be allowed to eat normally. So then I started eating completely regular again until the age of 12. And at about 12 years old, um, on the onset of puberty, they kind of, because uh, I get tested blood work every year, it came back much higher than usual. And they deduced that I had celiac. So I was, um, I was now in a position where I was in a weird time in middle school and I was shifting friends. I didn't have as many friends as I as I wanted, I was unhappy with my situation. Everything was kind of going downhill, in my opinion. I felt like I felt like everything was going to get worse, and my friends were not supportive. They they would make jokes and always like like say stuff about my gluten free food and like like kind of make it hard for me to feel comfortable around them and in general being gluten free. So, what I had to learn is, and what I had to realize is that I really needed to overcome these obstacles in a way that. That, that also allowed them to understand and accept me for who I am, realizing that this is something I can't change. And it's something I have to deal with every single day. You think I want to go out of my way to go have to make sure that everything is a little bit safer for myself or that I'm eating gluten-free when I'm on a trip with my friends or when I'm out to dinner. Like there's so many aspects of it that nobody thinks about that the person has to deal with themselves when they make these comments. So I, I really, I really kind of said to my friends, I was like, you need to understand, like, it, I, I get so sick when I eat gluten, I wish I could, you think I don't want to eat pizza, you think I don't want to eat cookies, you think it, it's not like it's not, it's not even not something to joke about, because go ahead, make a joke once in a while, I don't care, like, but it's more just, you need to realize it's something I can't change. And then so when I kind of first found out, it was more of kind of figuring out how I can both eat safely and be safe while also getting other people to understand and accept me. So that was really the beginning of it. Yeah, absolutely. So when you talk about, you know, kind of realizing that you had to approach your friends in this different kind of way, you know, is there anything that kind of spurred that realization on or like a kind of a turning point or was it just something that over time? It was, it was honestly more over time as, as I said, at this time period, I like was kind of switching friends, making new friends, things were changing. It was middle school and all I was worried about was kind of making sure that I had like the right friends for myself. And so then these kids who were there forever, kind of as I got closer and closer to them and as I, and as I grew bonds with them, they started to spend more time with me and started to truly kind of understand like it's nothing I can change. And, and they never really looked at me like I was like the gluten-free kid, which is like something I kind of am happy about. But at the same time, I always felt like I was. So like 
though their jokes to them were just jokes, like what I felt like made them overcome it is realizing that like we're sitting here right now all eating burgers and you can't eat. It was, it was, it was those experiences that really shifted it. And like, as we got older, for sure. And parents were a big part of it when I was younger, because I I had these close, this closer group of friends with really understanding parents who would bring food into their homes for me and literally buy food just so I could have it. And it was the nicest thing in the entire world. And I'm so thankful for that. And these were my closest friends. So they really understood and realized how important it was for me to be able to eat safely. And then there's some other friends who were, whose parents were trying to be accommodating. I don't think they were ever trying to be rude, but like, they would like make comments like, oh, I got to deal with that. And like, and like, that was hard to hear as a kid. I didn't want to be the kid who was a burden to anybody. And I, and I had to grow to learn how to deal with that. And I had to grow to learn with, I had to learn how to deal with, with not eating sometimes or eating before I go places or just figuring it out in my own way. And I think like, I think a lot of the help was a lot of parents as we got older, not only realizing that I'm able to deal with myself and they don't need to worry about me as much because I didn't want to be a burden to them anyway. But at the same time, having such understanding parents of of my friends who I was the closest with was such an amazing thing. Because like if I'm down the shore during the summer and I'm sleeping at my friend's house and I wake up in the morning, there was gluten free waffles for me to eat. And they knew that they put tinfoil on the thing and then I'm safe to eat. And like and if, if I didn't have those bonds that I made with these people because I wasn't scared to say I need to be safe, then I never would have been able to understand and learn how to deal with it on an everyday basis. And I think that is such an important message and that, that goes really into the next point. If there's maybe folks out there who are younger, folks who are guys that are in this position where they've either just been diagnosed or maybe they aren't lucky enough to have the kind of friends and their parents that are supportive that you had, Um, you know, what would you kind of say to those people or what advice would you have? The advice that I have for people who don't know how to deal with, with having celiac disease is honestly, you need to not think of it like it's something that needs to be a, a whole, it's not a whole part of you. It's not, it's not your everything. It's just something in your life. That's an obstacle you need to overcome. And when you have something that is as fixable as eating safely so you feel better, you can't be scared and can't be insecure to speak about it and be open about it or else you're never gonna overcome it. And and honestly, throughout my whole life, what I've learned is every time I don't speak up and say, I'm gluten-free, or if if I just make that little decision, oh, I think I'll be fine, I always end up getting sick and I always end up feeling worse in the end. And if socially you're scared that your friends aren't going to accept you for it, either you need to, you need to make them, you need to help them understand and help them realize that it's not something you can change, or you need to, you need to find people who will understand and will be there for you. Because I think the most important thing is having supportive people. And honestly, if I didn't have such a supporting mom who does everything for me and literally from the past five years has not only cooked me endless meals to make sure I'm safe, but made sure that I know how to make sure I'm safe. I wouldn't have this. So it, you need to surround yourself or try to surround yourself with people who are going to be understanding and going to be willing to accept you for who you are. It sounds like Celia has really brought such a great perspective in your life with realizing, you know, your worth beyond just having celiac disease and the kind of friends and the kind of support networks that you deserve. Um, you know, would you say there's any other kind of silver lining, so to speak, that having celiac has brought in your life? Absolutely. I could give you an endless list of this, actually, because having celiac not only has made me so much less insecure as a person overall, but it's brought me so much closer with my big sister. I have two sisters. One is seven years older than me and the other one's five years older than me, 24 and 22. And the oldest one has celiac as well as I do. And I'm kind of the reason why she even found out she had celiac in the first place, because my whole family had to get tested when they thought I had it when I was little. And then they found out when she was 16 that she had it. So she's had it for a long time now. And me and her are able to bond over the amazing foods that we can find to eat and the amazing different idea. We we could cook in the kitchen for days on end. We could We could search for different restaurants to go eat endlessly and we we do 
and we go to the best possible places for us to eat. And luckily, my mom and dad have given us the ability to, to find these places and do these things to have some of the most amazing meals I've ever had in my life. And I was a foodie before I became gluten-free. So what I realized is being gluten-free only made me more of a foodie because now I have to find more and better places to go because I don't always have the accommodations to have the food that I always want. And that makes it 10 times better when I do have it. And along with that, I think being gluten-free has made me realize there's so many opportunities for my future to be able to not only help people, like, like I'm now realizing that I can do, and also to be able to one day maybe even open a gluten-free restaurant or open a gluten-free chain that is going to be able to support people safely and not get them sick. Like there's so many, there's so many things that we can work on as a whole to make, to make things better. And I think this is just having celiac has only given me more opportunities to think like that. I think that's such an amazing way at looking at things. And you're definitely right. It opens up this whole new world of opportunity that a lot of folks that like you and me lived for a while and then that got diagnosed, never even thought about or never even considered this whole other community, this whole other way of eating. And like you said, it makes it that much more enjoyable when it's not just, I went to the grocery store and picked something up, but it's like the thrill of the hunt, of the find, of you, you spend all this time researching. And then you're so happy when they're play. like understanding and it's all safe and you can just feel calm that you're not going to get sick it's the best feeling in the world it's a type of excitement that's very hard to explain to other people you know because a lot of people yes. are like oh, I went to a great restaurant and for us it's like no they knew what celiac disease was and it's yeah. so exciting exactly and like with my friends even like when, when they went oh, when we went to Maryland we found this place called Burton's and it was so incredibly good and when I went there I had lobster mac and cheese I had like the best steak I've ever had with mashed potatoes. And I got all these different, I like everything that I, I got seven layer chocolate cake at the end of it. And they, they understood everything and it was so good. And my friends were so happy to see me so happy enjoying my food. Like it really, it was amazing. And then I also found this pizza place called Blaze, like I said before, which, which is absolutely amazing. And they, I walked, I, all my friends had McDonald's. It was so late at night. It was like 11 o'clock and I had to leave on my own in an Uber because I had nowhere, no other way to get around in Maryland. And so I had to figure out for myself, go on a hunt. The, the, the one place that was on Find Me Gluten Free that I thought maybe might be safe. It was, it was all maybes. I wasn't even sure. And I go in and they're like, oh yeah, we completely understand. He changes his gloves. He said, we have a completely different thing for the dough that presses it down. We will put it on a cover so it doesn't touch anything on the oven. And like the feeling and the, the happiness I had of being able to eat that pizza and not wake up feeling sick the next morning. I, I can't explain it. You're right. It's unexplainable. It's such a nice, it just feels like so being accommodated is just like so exciting. And so like, yes, I'm included. I'm a part of it. I get to eat. I get to enjoy. It's, it's so exciting. Um, yeah. And, you know, kind of going forward, you know, as you are someone in high school, how are you kind of focusing on your college search? Cause I know that's something that a lot of other kids with celiac disease worry about. Yeah, so um, my college search is something interesting because I, I'm making celiac a priority, honestly. Like, I want to find a place that is both the best for me academic-wise, but also the best for me food-wise. Because if I can't eat, then there's no, there's no worth in going there because then I'll just feel sick all the time and nobody wants that. So what I've realized and what I've done is I've, I've gone to, when I visit each of these schools, I scout out the area and I try and find places that I know that are familiar to me that I know are gluten-free. When I went to visit Delaware, I saw Honey Grow. I know that they understand it and that they'll prepare it safely if, if you tell them to and they actually do it right. I, I, when I went to Maryland, I realized it was a little harder for me because unlike Delaware, which had this huge food court for gluten-free, I was kind of, I, I, I didn't know how much gluten-free they had there. And I was with my friends and that's kind of the friend aspect of it. I was on a tour with all my friends and there was five other boys with me. And I was really, really scared to kind of like say that I was gluten-free to the, to the lady who was doing the tour for us. And so my friends were like, come on, say it. Like, why haven't you asked yet? Why haven't you asked yet? Like, don't you want to know what you can eat? Don't you want to know if you could go here? Cause I really liked school. And 
I was like, no, it's so embarrassing. Because there was like, there was just some other people on the tour, tour who we kind of knew. And we were like, it was just very embarrassing to me. And that's one of the examples of being insecure about speaking up for yourself. So then my friend actually gets up and goes, do you want me to say it for you? And I was like, you know what? I actually do. I'm kind of embarrassed about it. So so having having that support, he, he went up for me and he was like, he was like kind of quietly. He was like, so my friend gluten-free, do you know if you like anything about the gluten-free stuff here? And then she told me all about it. And I was so happy to hear it. And I was so relieved to like, to like that. That's another instance where I feel better about myself. And I feel, feel more inclined to then myself next time go up on my own and say it because I, I don't need to feel insecure about it. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't worry so much about the fact that, oh my God, people are like, he's gluten-free. Like who cares? doesn't matter. It doesn't change me as a person. I'm still the same person I would be anyway. Well, firstly, I think that's super sweet that your friend was willing to do that. But secondly, yeah. I think it's an absolutely phenomenal idea for you to be thinking so proactively about the college search. You know, it's, it's so much better to arrive at college, know exactly what you can eat, where you can get the food, not have to worry on top of all of the worries you have as a freshman about your roommate and your classes and your professors are getting around campus. Like you said, we all need to eat. Uh, that's a very big, important part of the college experience. And while a lot of you know people without celiac disease don't really consider the dining options on campus, you are eating, you know, up to three meals a day to maybe more, who knows? <laughs> and being able to have safe food, you know, if you're getting sick three times a day, that's really going to impact the experience you have. So, I mean, huge kudos to you and huge kudos to you just on your, your perspective and your confidence, because I think there are going to be so many folks in our community that really need to hear somebody like you and not just, you know, older adults or other folks with celiac disease saying like, hey, it's okay, it doesn't change you. But to hear somebody, you know, their age in a similar position in high school, be able to share your perspective, I think that is so invaluable. So thank you so much for taking your time to do that. I truly, truly appreciate that. Thank you so much for saying that because it, it really has been a hard, a rough ride. And being able to say that, that I have, in my opinion, overcome it is something that that I take to heart and I take personally as like, as like, I, I take pride in that. So I really, really appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. Do you have any kind of closing remarks or last bits of wisdom that you want to share before we go? Well, yes, absolutely. So people who don't have the same opportunities as us, it, it might be harder to have these experiences and pay for the expensive gluten-free food and everything that they have to deal with because some of the best foods I've had have been at some of the most expensive places. And, and I want everybody to realize that if you're in a situation where it's harder for you to deal with this, that you need to work and you need to be, be willing to go out and try and find places that you can be safe and you need to speak up for yourself because it's so important to be able to eat safely. Like you said, like everybody needs to eat. And we really all do. So if you're, if you really are worried that you might not be able to like, you, you need to find the places that work best for you, honestly. And I, so like, if you, if you think that you need to go somewhere and you need to be as thorough as possible, ask as many questions as you want. Don't worry about who it's bugging. Don't worry about what you, what you're insecure about. You just need to be willing to do it so that you can be safe. Absolutely. I think that's so important to remember at the end of the day, see like disease is a disease. It's not a choice. And as long as you are kind and respectful, you are not a burden. And like you said, finding safe foods is so much more important than trying to um, and, and things like that. So thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate everything you said. Of course.